October 22nd, and today I'm going to talk about The Silence of the Lambs. A really, really good, what I would, yes, consider to be a horror movie, and I have the dual Blu-ray Criterion Collection. It's got a beautiful case over there. I watched it in the past, and I watched it recently today, sort of, kind of doing other things, but also there were moments when I was just drawn into the movie. It's so good. The acting is great in all of them. I don't even know who directed it, but the director had to be great. Um, but I've heard, um, I haven't looked into it a lot, but I heard that it like swept the Grammys or something. Apparently it got a lot of Grammys and um, I don't know if they wanted to officially call it a horror movie, maybe like a psychological thriller, psychological crime drama or whatever. <laughs> But I do think that it was marketed as a horror movie, and obviously uh, Hannibal Lecter is like a horror icon. And there's a lot of scary moments in this movie, and um, there is blood and disturbing stuff. And I think even like, like I said, the way it's marketed and the music and you know that's in the movie and stuff um, definitely gives like a horror vibe. So I think it's more than just a psychological crime thriller I think I think it is a horror movie and it's very interesting where people are kind of divided on that anyway yes Hannibal Lecter is like a serial killer who was a cannibal and ate his victims and he is locked up and um, there's like a rookie uh, investigator or detective or whatever she's put on this case of this Buffalo Bill guy who's another serial killer on the loose and he's basically killing women and skinning them and wearing their skin and he's a real sicko but she goes to meet Hannibal Lecter I guess to give her some kind of insight to find this guy he's a very intelligent man and like I said I was kind of watching in and out of the movie but yeah, there's the time when she goes to see him. She goes down into those dark, you know, hallways where the inmates are kept. Some of the most disturbed people or whatever. And a lot of the, you know, she passes by a few inmates and um, they're crazy, kind of bouncing off the walls or climbing on the bars and it's dark and dingy and or they're sitting there not saying anything. And when, when he gets, when she gets to Hector... Hannibal Lecter's cell, it's like all neat and everything, and he's kind of like standing like right in the center of it, like expecting her or whatever. It's like completely different. And, um, you know, he's basically like, he says something like, the last inmate that you passed said something to you, like, what did, what did he say? And she's like, he said that he could smell my vagina, basically, and... And then, like, it zooms up on Hannibal Lecter, and he's, like, his nostrils are flaring, like, he's trying to sniff. <laughs> and he's, like, he's, like, I can't smell it. He's, like, I smell, like, you wear, like, a certain kind of lotion, and, like, sometimes you wear a certain kind of perfume or something, but you're not today. And it's, like, man, was this guy, like, a highly intelligent or something? <laughs> like, you can tell all these details just by sniffing or whatever. It's crazy. Oh, and basically I think he tells her that he's not going to help her, basically, and uh, she starts to leave, and the inmate that spoke to her before is, like, ejaculating, and then that's that part is just nasty. I, <laughs> I forgot about that. I'm like, oh, man. But then Hannibal Lecter's like, okay, I'll help you. I'll help you come back or whatever. So she's on the case, and it shows, like, some footage of her training and stuff. But, uh, yeah, he, he ends up helping her to, to lead her to the Buffalo Bill guy, who's the same actor that played in Mangler as the detective, as the good guy in Mangler. And so I watched it before, and I didn't know who that Ted Levine or Todd Levine or whatever that guy was. And then when I watched the Mangler, it was like he was in the Silence of the Lambs. And now when I watch the Silence of the Lambs again, I'm like, man, he's a really good actor. He really is. Everybody in here is a really good actor. Anthony Hopkins, like, the perfect role role for him, the Clarice woman, like she, the actor played the perfect role, um, 
Yeah, you see how it shows like his face, like a sinister smile and stuff, you know, it's total like horror vibes. And, uh, but he leads him to him, but he ends up escaping in brutal fashion. I think he's about to have like his last supper or something, and he ends up like breaking a glass or something and cutting officer or something, I don't remember. But he beats an officer with a knife stick, like brutally. And that's a pretty crazy scene. It's like, hoof, 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 <laughs> just like swinging, like. And it shows the officer, like, all bloodied and stuff, blood all over the floor and everything. He escapes. But basically, like, the climax of the film goes to where she and Jodie Foster, okay, that's the woman that played Clarice. She goes to find Buffalo Bill. And Buffalo Bill already has, like, another woman trapped in his house. And in his house, he has, like, a giant kind of well that she's down in there. And he has this dog named Precious. He likes to wear, like, women's clothing and their skin and look in the mirror and stuff and think that he's attractive or whatever. He's totally deranged. But he kept, keeps her down in this well that he's going to kill her later and skin her or whatever. She ends up tricking the dog to getting into the well with her. And so she kind of holds the dog hostage against him. And he's like, you know, let go of the dog or whatever. And she's like, give me a phone or let me out of here or whatever. Kind of trying to use the dog as leverage. She'd been down there for a while. Well, we see um, a bunch of agents arrive to a house that they think is Buffalo Bill's house. And it looks like there's going to be this big crackdown where they've all got shotguns and they're all ready. And then they ring the doorbell. We see the doorbell ring at his house. He goes to the door, and then Jodie Foster is there, the Clarice woman. And uh, the agents are, like, at the wrong house, but she's at the right house. She starts asking him these questions and stuff, and she notices that she knows, like, she is at the killer's house. She knows it's him. And uh, she's about ready to draw her gun, and then she does draw her gun on him, and he has a gun in the room around the corner and uh he kind of runs around runs grabs the gun and runs and then there's kind of like a chase scene where she's he's kind of disappeared but she's going through this house through these rooms and it's really horrifying just the stuff that the, just the house is creepy and there's not a whole lot there maybe it's just knowing like what goes on there and it's just kind of like dark and dingy and there's like clippings of the killings and stuff that he's kept, and there's like a mannequin body or something that has like some of the skin on there. She finally gets to the girl in the well, and the girl's like, oh, help me, help me, and she's like, I'm gonna help you, but like I'm gonna have to leave this room, and the girl's like, screw you, like don't leave me, don't leave me. And she thinks she knows where Buffalo Bill is, behind a door, and it's very intense and eerie. And you can tell that she's kind of nervous. And then, like, he cuts the lights, and he has, like, a night vision goggles on. And then you can see that she's, like, really terrified, like, tripping over things. And you see things from his view, like, in the night vision goggles, and she's, like, swinging the gun around. Doesn't know any where anything is, because it's, like, complete darkness. And you can see, like, the terrifying look on her face, and you can feel for her, like, you're in that moment. It's very intense. And he's, like, kind of toying with her, like, he's almost, like, reaching out, almost touching her. And then finally he pulls out the gun, and, like, he's going to put it right against her head. And, like, as soon as he clicks, like, she she fires her gun. As soon as she hears that noise, her quick reaction, she gets the shot, and she kills him. And then at the end of the movie, basically Hannibal Lecter calls her and, you know, lets her know that basically he knows where she is and stuff, and... He's escaped. <laughs> That's kind of how it ends, but, you know. So it's not all, a whole lot about Hannibal Lecter. It's more about kind of like the Buffalo Bill guy in the end. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I skipped around. Like I said, I was kind of in and out of the room and stuff during this. But, but yeah, like the whole Buffalo Bill scene at the end, and even the escape with Hannibal Lecter, is, like, it's great directing. And it's great acting, and it just draws you in. Like, you want to sit down and watch this and get your heart pumping. It's really good.
It's top notch stuff, so. But yeah, here's the case. I think it has like the moth, which there's a lot of moths at his, um, the killer's place, and I didn't catch the significance of that. I don't know if it has something to do with the dead bodies there or something. I don't know. It says The Silence of the Lambs and this chilling adaption of the best selling novel by Thomas Harris, the astonishingly vers versatile director Jonathan Demme. Which I don't know what else he did. He crafted a taunt psychological thriller. See, they don't even say a horror movie, but it's a psychological thriller about an American obsession, serial murder. And yeah, that's the kind of thing about this too, is that there's kind of a sense of realism that these people could be, you know, there are like, there are serial killers out there. You know, we've had Ted Bundy and all that. John Wayne Gacy and Jeffrey Dahmer is kind of like an inspiration probably for the anthony hopkins character but but yeah that kind of adds a more of a realism to it too is that there are these sick people and like inside somebody's house that you, you could just walk by a house down the street and you wouldn't know that you know they have a hostage in there like in a well that they're like trying to skin alive to wear for you know or to eat them or whatever like Hannibal Lecter it says, as Clarice Starling, an FBI trainee who enlists the help of the infamous Hannibal, the cannibal, Lecter, to gain insight into the mind of another killer, Jodie Foster subverts classic gender dynamics and gives one of the most memorable performances of her career. As her foil, Anthony Hopkins is the archetypical anti-hero, cultured, quick-witted, and savagely murderous. Delivering a harrowing portrait of humanity gone terribly wrong, a gripping police procedural, and a disquieting immersion into a twisted psyche. The Silence of the Lambs swept the Academy Awards. Okay, that's, I guess, what it was. For the best picture, director, screenplay, actress, and actor, and remains a cultural touchstone. Well, that's pretty cool. I think it definitely deserves it. And I was really amazed when Criterion came out with this. It does have a little booklet. I haven't looked at the second disc yet, but I haven't really looked at the booklet either, but I'll show you. Hannibal Lecter and Clarice. Got Buffalo Bill. Oops, up there. Pretty awesome. Right there. I figure this is probably a movie that a lot of people have seen, but if you haven't, check it out. It's a classic. And, you know, I've said a lot of movies that would be in my top ten. I don't know if this would be. It probably should be, though. I definitely want to watch it more. But that's going to be it. So, God bless, guys. See you later.